path of action. So the path of action is basically the trajectory of a moving object. So basically tracing out the path that an object is moving through space. Now, uh, although path of action isn't uh, explicitly in the list of the principles of animation, a very similar topic is arcs, and that uh, that is listed as a principle of animation. Uh, and in fact, uh, uh, Frank Thomas and uh, Ollie Johnston uh, write uh, that it's uh, very difficult to uh, have uh, believable, uh, realistic, interesting motion uh, if you forget about uh, arcs. So the, uh, they mentioned that when uh, drawings uh, uh, were uh, made straight, then they basically killed the, the essence of, uh, of the action. Now, uh, there's a very similar uh, topic or, or um, term uh, called the line of action. Now, the line of action is uh, an indication of the visual flow for a single drawing. So, for example, this on the left we see two, two drawings and the uh, general visual um, direction indicated in these um, single drawings uh, would be the line of action for each uh, drawing. Uh, on the other hand, the path of action is the visual flow for a sequence of drawings uh, so that the trajectory that is um, uh, indicated uh, through a sequence of drawings. So basically an easy way to remember the, the difference is the line of action is for a single drawing and path of action would be for a sequence of drawings. Now uh, we'll mostly be thinking about the um, primary motion and the primary path of action. So uh, for a character jumping, that would be uh, basically following the path of their body as it's moving. Uh, but there are other uh, secondary uh, motions that, that occur. So for example, the swinging of the arm, uh, that is a secondary path of action. So. Now, uh, a nice exercise that has some interesting um, path of action would be, say, a brick drop. So here we see brick tipping over, falling through space, uh, hitting, uh, tipping over again. So uh, this is often an, an exercise that uh, animators learning uh, the, how to create believable motion uh, practice with. Now. Uh, in that uh, brick drop, as the uh, brick is uh, flying through the air, uh, the path of action for the brick is essentially a parabolic arc. And this is often the case when uh, something is flying through space, acted on by gravity, and when gravity is the primary force that is deflecting the motion as it flies through space, then we get a path of action that's a, a parabolic arc. Um, we see this even in effects animation, so a, a water stream also traces out a parabolic arc, as we can check by overlaying with the, the bouncing ball. Now, uh, uh, another common type of uh, path of action is a circular arc, and uh, we have various kinds of uh, timing and spacing for a uh, circular arc. So we have the uh, example when something is uh, tipping over, then uh, that has a certain uh, timing and spacing that, uh, that we'll talk about in a, another tutorial. Uh, and then uh, when something is swinging like a, like a pendulum uh, swinging on a pivot, then uh, this has a, a different kind of, of timing and spacing that, uh, that we'll also talk about in another uh, tutorial. A much less uh, common type of 
path of action is a, a spiral arc. So a spiral arc would be basically a circular arc, but with a radius that's um, uh, changing as the object uh, spirals in or, or spirals out. And then uh, finally, the uh, there's also complex uh, motion. So the um, path of action may not fall into one of these simple categories uh, because the motion is um, all the time uh, changing and the uh, trajectory traces out a, a complicated um, path of action. Now, having something, for example, in a, uh, a leaf drop, the challenge here in animating this um, in a believable way is that uh, although the, the path of action seems somewhat arbitrary, uh, the challenge is that the timing and spacing along that path of action all have to be consistent with uh, creating believable motion. So linking the timing and spacing and path of action all together. Uh, we'll see that um, knowing the laws of motion, uh, basic um, things about how forces uh, influence the um, motion of an object that uh, should be useful for uh, these kinds of complex uh, scenarios. Now, one uh, one last thing: the um, uh, it's important that uh, you keep in mind that the path of action is not the same as the motion curve that um, you might see in a graph editor. Uh, so in this example, if a ball is falling straight down, then we have a very simple path of action. The path of action is a straight line as the ball falls straight down. Now, uh, if we look at the position of the ball uh, on each frame, that's what is the motion curve in the, uh, in the graph editor. Uh, that um, motion curve happens to be a, a parabolic arc, as, as we'll see in another tutorial. Uh, but you see the motion curve is itself um, not a straight line. However, the path, path of action is a straight line. One way to remember this is that the path of action is a trajectory uh, in space, whereas the motion curve is a curve, which is a graph in time, time being the uh, frames. So in, uh, in summary, the path of action is the trajectory traced out by a moving object or character. The line of action is something different. That is, line of action is the visual flow of a single drawing. Uh, path of action is uh, the visual flow uh, through a sequence of drawings. Uh, when uh, objects are moving as they fall, then they, they often have, have a parabolic arc as a path of action. And uh, we'll have uh, more tutorials uh, that go into more detail about uh, parabolic arcs and this type of path of action. Uh, circular arcs are another common uh, kind of, of path of action, such as a swinging motion, uh, something tipping over. And uh, again, we'll have we'll go into more detail about the timing and spacing on uh, these types of uh, 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 circular arcs. And then finally, uh, the path of action uh, should not be confused with the motion curve in the graph editor. So the path of action is uh, related to the motion curve somewhat because, of course, both the path of action and the motion curve are describing uh, from different points of view uh, the motion of uh, an object or a character, but uh, don't think that the shape of the path of action will tell you very much about the shape of the motion curve in the graph editor. So that's the um, first introduction to path of action. And as I said, in the uh, next few tutorials, we'll get into a lot more detail on specific cases. So see you then.